Hey everybody, it is a frigid cold day today and one of the few weekends I'm not finding myself in the mountains due to insane road conditions and frigid cold. So I thought I'd stay home today and make a gear video on my backcountry touring setup, as well as my more ski mountaineering focus setup that I'm using for those bigger objectives. I've been backcountry skiing since I was a young kid, probably started going when I was seven or eight for the first time with my dad. I vividly remember using like those inserts that would go into your normal downhill ski at first, the full frame binding, that whole progression. But now I find myself in Colorado and I've been really focused on doing bigger mountain objectives in the spring, skiing a lot of the big peaks, the 13,000 and 14,000 foot peaks, as well as just doing a ton of casual touring around the front range to just get out, get some exercise and enjoy the mountains. So before we get started, this is my current setup. I definitely would like to add more pieces and gear eventually, but I think I have a good kind of balanced quiver that's allowing me to do the big objectives that I'm after, as well as enjoying those more casual laps. Let's get started looking at some of the essentials I'm always bringing, and then we'll get to some of the skis and boot setups. But I wanna first start looking at Avalanche safety gear as being in the backcountry, this is kind of our first priority that we need to make sure is taken care of. I am almost always skiing by myself, but I still am bringing all the Avalanche safety gear with me. I much rather have that safety gear in case I run into others, in case anything weird happens, I will always take the weight of Avalanche gear any day. So that starts with an Avalanche beacon. This will allow you to find someone or someone to find you. And yes, I am having it on even when I'm by myself and there's nobody around. The next thing is a shovel. I have just an older black diamond shovel. I love this one. It's a little heavier than some of the modern ones, but it feels burly. I definitely just like something with the T handle so you get a good grip and can move snow quickly. And I also always have a probe with me. I'm letting someone borrow mine this weekend, but it's a black diamond probe. The last thing I'll often bring is an inclinometer. Um, just in case you find yourself in some terrain that you're not expecting to go up, you haven't researched, it's really nice to understand slope angles at kind of a moment's notice and not be kind of guessing. It's such a lightweight thing that why not throw it in the pack? The next thing I wanna talk about is just kind of what I'm wearing from the bottom up. I always like to start with a merino wool base layer or a merino wool blend. I've found that pure merino kind of pills and doesn't last quite as long as something that has a little polyester or something else in it. I was always skeptical if merino wool was worth the cost, but after picking up a few pieces probably five, six years ago, have never looked back. For me, a merino wool piece can be used so many more times in a row that when I'm on trips, when I'm camping, it just is so much more worth it. I feel like I can have a lot less clothes with some Merino products in there. And for me, that greatly offsets the cost. I will always have a long John Merino wool top. This one's actually like only 50% Merino, a little more stretchy. And then I'll have some Merino um, bottoms as well. Merino wool really shines in the back country where you're sweating a lot more and just exerting yourself. The final piece of Merino I find myself using actually a ton is just this smart wool Merino t-shirt. This thing is just the ultimate everyday shirt. And in the springtime, I love it for backcountry skiing just because it's a little cooler than the long sleeve counterpart. Pop off the jacket, get a little sun and get a little more airflow. The next thing to talk about is gloves. Um, I'm a fan of the Hestra gloves. They're just built so well. They last forever. Um, and I've never had any issues with them. I also have some lighter weight gloves that I use in the spring when I don't need these. But in the middle of the winter, those are kind of my go-to for both resort skiing and backcountry. I will also sometimes bring up a helmet, um, depending on the line. I just have the Smith Mission helmet. Um, I find that it's almost as lightweight as the kind of pure ski mountaineering helmets. And then I can also use it for resort skiing as well. When possible, I like to buy one thing that serves multiple purposes, just a little bit more minimal, less gear overall. I'll usually only bring this on bigger lines and objectives but I found the ventilation's decent for the weight, probably not as good as the kind of more pure ski mountaineering helmets, but for me, it serves my purpose and I can always put it on the outside of my pack if needed if I'm getting too hot. In terms of mid layers, I always have a down jacket with me. I very rarely put it on, but in case something happens out there or I need to be there for a little bit longer, being able to pull this out and put it on just can be a literal lifesaver. So I will always bring one, packs down small. It'll usually be more of a mid-weight down, 
but I have a few different down layers depending on what I'm doing, the temperatures and all that. When not using the down on top of my base layer, I'll usually be hiking up in just kind of a light fleece layer. This one's from Decathlon. It's kind of similar to like the Patagonia, like I think R2, R3, but just this kind of lighter mid-weight fleece layer. Most of the time, no matter the temperature, when you're going uphill, that's perfect for me. And I will always, always, always like that down, have a shell. If it's windy, if the snow comes in, you name it. I don't ever find myself going out into the backcountry without a shell. This one is from Marmot. I've had it for a number of years. It just held up incredible. I love the bright red, so hopefully someone can find my body. And then the last thing I'll mention is just goggles. I don't remember exactly what Smith goggles these are, but these are the ones I'm using at the resort and sometimes in the backcountry. I also have a few older goggles I'll sometimes use instead when I don't wanna beat those up or I'm throwing them in the pack with a lot of stuff. I almost forgot about my outerwear pants. And for those, I have the Outdoor Research Trail Breaker 2. I got these last year and they have been absolutely incredible. They're a soft shell material, but to be honest, 99% of the time, I don't need something fully waterproof. Even when snowing in Colorado, the snow is often so dry, it's not really seeping into clothes. So I use these in every condition. What really sold me on these pants were these two massive vents on either side of your leg. I love that there's no mesh or material in there that's getting in the way of airflow. And both of them almost go down to your knees. So when it's warm and you have both of these open, you're able to get a lot of airflow and stay a little bit cooler. They also have amazing pockets throughout, fit on my waist and around my boots perfectly. And I definitely think these will be my backcountry pants for the foreseeable future. Let's get to some good stuff and start talking about some skis. This is something where I've evolved my thoughts on a lot just in the past year. I was skiing some K2 Waybacks for a while. I skied those on Shasta, all over California, um, in Idaho quite a bit. And they were a great ski, but getting a little bit beat up and old. And I envisioned when I moved out to Colorado, all these big mountain objectives. I just was like off going up Whitney and was just thinking about the lightest weight setup possible. So I picked up these DinaFit Blacklight 95s. These are a carbon fiber construction and super, super light. I have these skis paired with the DinaFit Super Light 150 bindings. These are a tiny binding that are a little bit more race inspired, but it keeps these skis down to somewhere between 1300 and 1400 grams per ski. I really like the 95 underfoot in Colorado. It just gives you a little bit more ability to deal with a little fresher snow if you find it. And I used these skis on almost all my missions last year. I brought these up a number of 14,000 foot peaks, um, brought them up a lot of places in the Indian Peaks wilderness in the spring. And to be honest, at first I was like, oh, this is not performing what I expected of a ski just because I never ski something super light like this. But I had a blast on these. And when I was in really steep commanding terrain, I really trusted the edge and the stiffness. So overall, this was a great pickup for me and something I'm definitely keeping in the quiver for those longer days. But at the end of last year, I was like, I need some more performance out of my skiing. I was a um, freestyle skier, I was a racer, big downhill skier, so those black lights weren't fully doing everything I wanted, and I decided to get the Black Crow Navis Freebird. I felt like this ski, based on my research, was kind of hitting that fine line between a little bit more performance, um, still somewhat lightweight, but a little heavier, and I paired it with the ATK um, 14 Freerider. Overall, I wanted this ski to be my more performance ski. Any mission that's not hiking a long, long ways in is gonna to move to this ski, um, as well as this is now my casual touring ski for doing laps. Um, this one I think is like 103 underfoot, so it's a little wider than that 95. And on the biggest powder days, it'd be nice to have a little bit more flotation. But for me, the 103 is a fine balance between having enough flotation, as well as being able to get these into a lot of couloirs. I've absolutely loved these skis so far, especially this year. They definitely don't have as much of a rocker profile for those really deep days, but on the few times I've had it on more steep committing terrain, I just trust them fully. I like that little bit more camber and can see why these are such an iconic ski, like rooted in Chamonix. In terms of the bindings, ATK just makes the best bindings out there in my mind. Um, for the weight to performance, you just can't beat them. And I decided to just get a little bit more burly ones here, 
just for that performance that I really wanted out of this setup. I don't really need the DIN up at 14, but I really like having this one because it came with a free rider spacer that allows me to have the boot actually making contact on the binding and the ski itself instead of flopping between those two pins. And I just wanted something more of a burly construction here that I can have for years and always trust on those commanding lines. In terms of skins for both of those skis, I actually have the skins that come with the skis. Um, I got these with the black lights and they've worked well. I don't know who makes Dina Fit skins, but have no complaints. Um, and the Black Crow skins I got with the ski just because they were pre-cut, they're a Pomoka skin. What else is there to say? To pair with these skis, let's look at the boots I'm using. And this is something I've definitely had quite a journey on. So when I got my black light skis, I also picked up some Scarpa F1s. I was able to pick these up on Facebook Marketplace last year and I'm so happy I did. I did not have them fit to me or anything and just was lucky that my foot shape worked well. So this is the boot that I skied everywhere last year. It's the only boot I had. It's super lightweight where you have the bow on the bottom, the straps on the top. These are 2,500 grams each and I think the flex is 95. But for me, I wanted this to kind of pair with those black lights for big mountain objectives and definitely think they ski super well for the weight. I'm glad I didn't do anything lighter like the Scarpa F1 LT. For me, this is kind of the minimum performance that I would want out of a boot. When I get these things fully tightened up at the top of a steep commanding line, they've always got me down in a trustworthy way. So they will definitely be staying in my quiver, mostly paired with those black lights. But at the end of last year, when I got my Black Crows, I also wanted some boots with a little bit more oomph for my more performance setup. I wanted to find something in between my Scarpa F1s and my full downhill setup. And I had quite a journey with this. I originally actually got the Dynafit Hoji Freeze. And after punching those boots out like five times, trying everything, possible, they just did not fit my foot. But luckily the boot fitter I worked with was awesome, was able to take those boots back and get me into something that actually fit my foot. And that's when I wound up with the K2 Dispatch Pro. This boot fit my foot so much better as I have a higher instep, a bigger arch and a wider foot. Um, and it's been extremely comfy ever since getting it. This boot is 130 flex and 3,100 grams. That puts it kind of right in between the boots that I was looking at, and it's performed really well so far. Been super comfy on the uphill, great range of motion, um, but I will say I'm still tweaking it a little to get it where I want it on the downhill. I find myself leaning back, so I'm gonna try some spacers or heel lifts in it, but it definitely skis a lot better than those F1s. For those of you like me who have a little bit more background in kind of downhill um, alpine skiing, I think sacrificing a little weight to get a setup like the boots and the skis that perform and ski the way you wanna ski is definitely worth it. If I was gonna add anything to the setup that you've seen, it would probably be a little bit wider um, powder ski with a little more rocker that I'd pair with these dispatches as well. So that's really the core of my whole setup, really the super light and a little bit more performance. I think these two strike a great balance for the minimal gear, for the most conditions and rideability and fun for me and my skiing. With that, let's look at the final few things that round out my gear list. Starting with the poles, I have the Black Diamond Expedition 3s, these are kind of a um, telescoping pole with three sections, so they're great for being able to pack for longer days. They got a big powder basket on it. They're lightweight, what's not to like? I also like the kind of longer extended grip. The only thing I'll note is these are not compatible with the Black Diamond Whippet attachment. Um, so I think I'm going to look for a single Whippet pole to pair with one of these for certain lines that I want that extra security. Um, the next thing I'll talk about is my climbing tools. Um, so this is a more ski mountaineering focused in the spring. I have a just kind of standard glacier axe, which is the black diamond, I think the Raven or whatever. I don't really take this out too much, but it is my only second axe. So in really steep lines like Skywalker Kular last year, I did bring two axes. So I will bring this as my secondary axe if needed, or if I'm doing any kind of glacial travel. Um, and the other um, axe, which is my main one, is the Petzl Gully. So I got this as a new axe last spring, and it's been absolutely incredible so far. The weight to performance ratio, I think, is as good as it gets, and um, it was always trustworthy for me. I also really like this adjustable stopper for the length here. 
Um, a little bit more comfort when you're hanging off of it a little bit more on those kind of steeper snow lines. I've never used it on more technical ice climbing, but I believe the Gully has the ability to do some kind of minor ice climbing if you're up somewhere steep with some ice if needed. For those steeper snow climbs, I'm also using the Black Diamond Sabertooth Crampons. They're definitely a heavier option, but they're so well built and so sturdy that for my needs right now and the amount of steep snow climbs that I do, they've always met my needs, so haven't needed to get it kind of a lighter setup. Finally, let's talk about backpacks. Um, the main pack I'm using for almost all my backcountry is the Nitro 22 from Black Diamond. I love that this thing has very wide, comfy hip pockets with these big pockets in it for shoving snacks or a camera. It also has this massive pocket that you can just shove anything you need on the outside. I usually will keep my shovel in here so it's easily accessible. Also, when I'm stripping off layers as I get hot on the climb, I love being able to shove these in here, not having to open the pack at all. This backpack's also super lightweight. Um, and it just has the practical things that I need. It has no interior organization, which I don't mind. It does have the kind of upper pocket here, which I'll put some glasses in or any snacks I might want to get. Um, has that massive pocket, which we talked about, which is just incredible. And it also has these daisy chains on here, which allow me to quickly put my helmet on there if needed. And then two really stretchy water bottle pockets that easily fit a full-size Nalgene or bigger bottle. I found this is perfect for most touring days. And I also do have my Osprey 38 liter mutant pack, which is just incredible, which is what I'm using on my longer days or something that might need an overnight where I don't need too much gear. And that is really my full setup from a casual tour up on Berthid Pass to um, solo skiing a 14er in the spring. If you have any questions at all on the specifics of why I chose this gear or why I like it, please let me know and I'd be happy to dive into more of the details. I know this was more of an overview. And also, if you like this video, a like and subscribe goes a long ways for me and would be greatly, greatly appreciated. And with that, I will catch you on the next adventure. And thank you so much for watching.